It is commonly known to people who live near rivers or take notice of other flowing fluids that when the fluid flows from a wide region to a constricted region, the speed of the fluid likely increases. Consider water in this section of pipe that narrows. It flows from a wide cross-sectional area to a narrower one. We know water can't bunch up, so it must flow faster through the narrow part of the pipe if flow is to be continuous. In a similar way, you speed up water that spurts from a garden hose when you squeeze the end and make it smaller. This change of speed with changing cross-section is a consequence of what we call the principle of continuity. For flow to be continuous in a confined region, it speeds up when flowing from a wide region to a narrower one. The path followed by a fluid is indicated with these streamlines. Where the flow is faster, the streamlines are closer together. So streamlines give us a picture of both the paths and the speeds of flow. Now here's the surprise. When a fluid speeds up in approaching a constricted region, the pressure within the fluid drops. That's right, drops. Look at these air bubbles in flowing water that act as pressure gauges. Where the pressure is high, the bubbles are squeezed to a small size. Where the pressure is low, the bubbles expand to a larger size. The larger bubbles where the speed is high indicate lower internal fluid pressure and the streamlines are closer together. Bubbles are bigger in the narrow part because internal pressure there is less. Where the flow is slower, bubbles are squeezed smaller. Interesting. Daniel Bernoulli, an 18th century Swiss scientist, studied fluid flow in pipes. His discovery is now called the Bernoulli principle. When the only variables are speed and pressure, the Bernoulli principle is stated as follows. Where the speed of a fluid increases, internal pressure in the fluid decreases, and vice versa. Where speed decreases, internal pressure increases. This applies when friction, turbulence, and changes in height don't affect pressure. The principle holds for smooth flow along particular streamlines. The pressures cited here are internal pressures within the fluid, not the pressure exerted when a fluid makes impact with a surface. The internal pressure in water from a high-speed fire hose is relatively small. But if it makes impact with you, it can knock you off your feet. Bernoulli talks about internal pressure. The Bernoulli principle is an expression of the law of energy conservation and is derived from the work energy theorem. The principle also follows Newton's second law of motion. Look at this parcel of fluid in the stream flow. It has a net force that accelerates it as it goes from the wider to the narrower region. So positive net work done on the parcel is converted into kinetic energy. Bernoulli's principle is consistent with both the conservation of energy and Newton's second law. Air flowing over the roof of this house passes through what for the air is a constricted region. What happens to pressure within the air as it gains speed? That's right, it is lowered. Look how the streamlines are closer together atop the roof. But air pressure beneath the roof inside the house is more or less at atmospheric pressure, appreciably greater than the pressure above the roof. So the roof is in danger not of being blown off, but pushed off by the greater air pressure inside. How about that? What happens to the roof is similar to what happens to air passing over and under an airplane wing. Air that gains speed over its top has less internal pressure than air flowing under the bottom of the wing. This results in lift. And thanks to Newton's third law, the air's upward force on the wing is matched by the wing's force on the air, deflecting the air downward. So airplanes fly. I like to quip and ask my students, what did birds do before the time of Bernoulli, or before the time of Newton? Here's an interesting application of the Bernoulli principle. You can do this in your kitchen sink. Loosely moor a pair of toy boats side by side, then direct a stream of water between them. Aha! What do we know about the internal pressure of flowing water? Is the internal pressure of faster moving water higher or lower? If you said lower, you're correct. So the water between the boats flows faster and exerts reduced pressure to the inner sides of the boats 
which allows the normal water pressure against the outside surfaces to push them together. This condition exists for ships docking at wharfs. Can you see why pilings are preferred? What happens to any water flow between the ship and a solid wharf? It speeds up more than against a dock with pilings. The ship seems to be drawn toward the solid wharf when actually it's pushed by greater water pressure on the other side. A similar thing happens when trucks pass too close on a highway. Variations in fluid speeds are accompanied by variations in their internal pressures. Here's a student who is not happy with Bernoulli. In the next screencast, we'll return to more applications of the Bernoulli principle. Until then, I want to leave you with a question. Consider this pair of empty soda pop cans suspended by strings with a small space between them. If you blow air between the cans, will they move apart, move toward each other, or remain as they are? Defend your answer. Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.